What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Not much to talk about, I guess, right? Well, I wanted to do a video a little different than all the other ones here. So much feedback on the last video I did. I appreciate it so much. So many views, so many likes, so many comments. I wanted to take a lot of the thought processes that I saw in those comments and put them into a video here. Because a lot of them were similar. And I wanted to give you my opinion on them and see if maybe it changes your opinion on them. But also, more importantly, hear in greater detail some of the opinions that you have. So one of the overwhelming responses was, that video was all fake and it's all for views. And I get that point more than any other point people make. Most of us can tell the chemistry has not changed between these two people. A lot of people are still split on whether they actually got married. And certainly there's a lot of things Chantal has done that would lead you to believe the marriage is not real. I guess my only response would be, what does that video change, right? How does that video make it more fake, right? If it's fake, then you're not believing any of it, and this video becomes irrelevant to the scope of the rest of the channel. Now, a big concern people had was that fake video was done because of income. Now, many of you know the CPM is about to increase. We've got the holidays coming up. And truthfully, if you were going to manufacture drama, this would be one of the more lucrative times to do so. That kind of gets juxtaposed to the fact that we can see her views have dropped, if not stopped, if you go to the ASMR channel, other channels. And you would really have to show me she didn't just have her worst month numerically because I won't believe it unless I actually saw the numbers, which she will never share. All of that said, I personally don't see how you can have both sides of this argument. You can't sit here and tell me that this person is a moron, that this person is a horrible actor, but then somehow saved their best acting for a extremely time-sensitive live stream that was contingent on building up to her most profitable month. Now, part of that argument is also, we've seen this before, because, to be honest, we have. It breaks up with Natter, breaks up with Sawa, they follow similar paths. But, what I saw different last night was, there were a lot of undertones that we don't have in those other videos. Now, I can't speak truthfully to being a Canadian, but I do feel like I can speak on the projection she made about her freedom. Because I am an American, and, you know, we do have certain freedoms here. A lot of those freedoms are tied to our car. The open road. A license. Getting out and being able to do as we wish. Now, Chantal was born into that. She was not born into the Muslim way of thinking. And why she might find comfort now in modest dress and timing, the way they have to handle themselves in public the way it allows her to shield some of the things that she might be insecure about, the reality is much of that religion is a stark contrast to the life she has known. Now, one of the many things brought up in that video was the comforts that she can no longer have. And much of them are connected to her simply getting into the car and driving where she wanted to go. If you watched her, you know that she found relaxation, going to get fast food all hours of the night, freedom of taking us on live streams out with her. That was only part of a process, in my opinion. You know, it was a whole cycle of, what should I eat? Where should we go? What should I get? And it didn't just stop with food and the orange julep. It went right over to going and getting people from the airport. She cannot do this in Kuwait. And financially, that's impacted her channel because we don't go on those ride-alongs anymore. Now, I would also say the food is a little separate than the other vices. Specifically the wheelchairs. And this is how I knew she's actually attracted, as much as we don't like to think she has, some new viewers. Because certain people weren't aware of what a wheelchair, which is an edible, was. Now, I think we need to stress that the wheelchairs... And Chantal's use of them, that was a person. That was Chantal. That was not a lifestyle. right? Chantal needed constantly something to relax and take the edge off. That was where her tranquility came from. 
if it wasn't going to be food, it was going to be the wheelchairs or something else. And we can go back and see that that has 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt not been replicated by Shisha. And I truly believe that she felt it would. She's even turned to cigarettes and realized that she can't get the same feeling that she expects. And last night was also, since we mentioned food, the first time we saw food come out. When she microwaved that block of cheese and sat there and slurped it up, so many of us thought back to that marshmallow fluff stream where she nearly ate the whole jar. Now, I won't sit here and tell you that I don't believe she hasn't been doing that off camera for weeks or months, but I will tell you, on camera, it's the first time we've seen it. And that, to me, plays into a lot of the truths. Truths that we've really not seen in the first breakup video. Truths that kind of go below the surface level of, we broke up, but are more complex to the person that Chantel is and the person that we know. And these are things that she misses and she cannot replace. Listen, she thought she could replace her animals. She tried to do it with a hamster. When that didn't work, she had to go get another cat. And while that might seem like a little subtle thing, the reality is all the things she wants to replace and can't are probably mounting on her, which is why she spends much of her videos telling us how happy she is. And most of us have sat here and said, are you telling us that you're happy? Or are you telling yourself that you're happy? This video also had some nuggets about not getting closure in the past. She practically admitted that she's ran from issues and she never provided resolutions or closure. And it's clear in watching that no matter what you think of her, they're still lingering in the back of her mind. The financial issues seem apparent as does the fracture of whatever happened between her and Pete's, and it's odd because her and Pete's have such different recollections of the current nature of their relationship. And to be fair, that relationship is just one of many things that going back to her Muslim woman lifestyle has been strained. You know, she can sit there and say that she can't be vulgar out in public and that she can't be fully independent, but it's pretty clear that she also has no one to relate to. Right? Other than the viewers. That's, in my opinion, why we had to go live. There's no one she can call. right? She can't phone a friend locally and have them come over and talk about her struggles and her fears. They're not going to understand. And that's why I think when she goes live, we see such a defiance of her showing her skin, showing her hair. She knows that's not proper. And those infractions are taken very seriously in those cultures. If she had someone with her, they probably wouldn't let her do those things. Now, I would also think, to some degree, they put Salah and his family partially at risk when she does these things. She may do them to lash out and want attention, but it's not the proper way to get that from that religion. You know, Salah, to that point, has also made some considerations. I mean, technically, she shouldn't have a friendship or relationship with Pete's, but it seems like Salah has allowed to tolerate it, I guess would be the best way to put it. So, moreover, what she's not doing, from what we can tell, is having clarity in her life. And her religion should be providing that. You have to ask, you know, is she studying the Quran? Is she having her daily prayers? You know, we never see those binges, right? But how happy did she look when she got that plate of cheese? We all know how Muslim life looks at gluttony. And if you go back to those moments of her slurping up warm cheddar, you see a happy person. And you see the same happy person that many of us saw for years on end. So, what does anyone make of this? You know, it's really a hard thing to say. But I think, in my opinion, we finally saw the harsh reality. We saw a person that ran away from all of their problems, that felt like they could create a whole new life and solve everything. And while at first, you know, they might have felt that way, they might have seen a, a new sense of purpose, a new life. But in time, she's learned that she doesn't actually value those things. And therefore, she's having to work simply to appear to be happy in following this lifestyle she's very much unfamiliar with. That work is now causing resentment and hostility. It's causing her to push away from where she is, not unlike she used to push away from where she was. 
And listen, heading back to Canada isn't the answer. It might be a short-term solution. But if she doesn't clear up the issue she leaves in her wake, she's always going to have this, quote, need to bees. Because she's turned her back on everyone that's actually supported her, from her VIBs and channel members to actual people in her real life. And it's left her with a network of no one that she can truly rely on. And no matter what you think of her, that has to be a very dark, difficult place. And I'm sure many of you will write it off as, well, she earned it. Yeah, you're right, she did. 100%. Every step of the way. But it doesn't make it any less damaging to her in the moment. Case in point, and I'll leave you with, with this. Go back to that first breakup video she did about Sala, right? She's crying into the camera. Pete's is probably unaware that this is all staged. And you hear him softly speak from the hallway, asking first if she's okay. When she responds that she is, he says, I'm here for you if you need me. In that moment, Pete's couldn't distinguish the video was fake. That was true compassion for her as a friend. And that moment, nearing a year old now, is probably the last time someone overheard her being upset and offered true and genuine support from a friendship or something more. I would wager to say that many of us, if not all of us, have not experienced a world void completely of family or friends, people who care about you. And the fact that she has to go online seeking that, trying to find that, is a big part of the problem. She didn't really need to be last night. She needed someone with her. And that's the problem. When you project that you've adapted to a lifestyle that you clearly haven't, when you attempt to adopt a religion that you can't follow, it leaves you alone. And there's going to be a time where she won't be able to turn on cell phone, laptop, tablet, and find a person waiting on the other side of the screen to tell her what to do or make her feel better. She's going to learn at some point that she has to clear all these things up in her life. And hopefully, going back to Canada, maybe hitting the reset button for a little bit, will be the start of that. But the question will be, whatever happens, whether she goes or stays, she still has to find a way to get her life together, get her income back in order, and salvage what she has left of her channel. Because right now, those things aren't happening. And if people truly believe what happened last night is all fake, at the end of the day, she's just going to push more people away that say this isn't worth watching because it's just scripted garbage. I'm going to leave you with a couple top comments from the last video. I appreciate you watching this one. And you know I will be back as soon as I can with more content.